Hello, I am here to do a pretty simple, kind of useless tutorial about um, creating mats out of particular. Um, I don't, you'd have to figure out how you would ever use this, but I think it's interesting. It gives you something to think about. Um, you know, creating mats um, traditionally done to sort of tell After Effects what you want to be visible and how you want it to come to be visible. And um, one of the interesting things you can do with it is create your mat out of um, a moving particle field and so you get this kind of moving uh, field of globs that you can use to transition between stuff. Um, so for instance if you wanted to, I have this weird idea here with this hand, so you start out with this regular looking hand and then you have your particle field coming in and turning it into stone and this is basically done by using the particle field as a mat um, twice and the first time it's isolating the fingers and the second time it's isolating everything around the fingers so that you can apply this texture here to just the fingers as it's revealing. So I'll obviously go over this in more in depth later but just want to give you the basic idea. And if making hands turn into stone is not really that interesting to you then maybe you want to do something more like this where you take some text and you make a transition that is more um, I don't know. Maybe there's other transitions of color available that are more interesting, but this one's kind of fun to do. So the way you do this is by, as I explained earlier, creating a mat. And mats are cool. Um, basically, they are something that you make that is giving value for um, solid or presence of something and opacity. So if you turn your opacity on, you can see that there's nothing there. And the little, you know, the black background of the comp may fool you, but it's basically just here's something, here's nothing. And when you go and apply that to something, um, the way it works is you can either, you know, imagine that this solid here is blocking the exposure of the camera if you were actually filming and this opacity was letting stuff through. Or if you're doing an inverted map, then it's the opposite. Then this actually is thought of as being solid and so this portion is actually going to be blocked and then this portion will be able to be seen through. And by using both of those, regular, inverted, and a non-inverted, you can isolate something very specific like we do with the hand. So, and mats are cool um, because they're really one of the first things that was ever used in special effects in the history of movies and um, a good example is um, in The Great Train Robbery where they have this they're in the building and they're filming in the building set but there's this window in the background and the train goes rushing by out the window and obviously they didn't have an actual conveniently placed building next to a train track and they waited for the train to come by and then started filming like basically what they did was they just put a mat in front of the portion um, and I'll oversimplify it by saying they put it over the portion of the film um, inside of the camera where they didn't want film to be exposed and that was the area where the window would be so when they were done, they had their strip of film, and wherever there was supposed to be a window was an area of film that was unexposed. And so now they could re-expose that film. They would put a mat over all the rest of the film, so in essence, they would boot an inverted mat. And now you're leaving just that window open for exposure, and then they expose that film to their other film that they got of the train. And it replaces um, the window with an image of a train going by, and thusly you have a composite. So that's how masks and mats, which are essentially the same thing, work. So um, let's just make it. I'll go through it and show you how it's done. So if you're following along and want to make one yourself, you can see what the steps are. Again, it's pretty basic, and you can play with it a lot and make it more interesting than this, but this is just the basics. So I'm going to just start over, do hand two, and I have this image of this hand that I got off of some stock site. I don't know what you want to use, but... This is just what I got. And so I'm going to make my hand. There you go. Next thing I'm going to do, leave the hand alone. I'm going to create a new comp. And I'm going to call this one Particle Match 2. And I'm going to do a new solid. Doesn't matter, obviously, what color it is because we're going to be applying particular. Do effect, trap code, particular. And now we're going to make our, I probably turn the opacity off so I can actually see what I'm doing. And we're going to make our alpha mat or our bloom mat with this. So I want to make it a box because it's going to be eventually traveling across the screen and I obviously want to make it tall and wide so we got to change my x and y, my y values. You don't really have to do anything with z but I want to make it big. Obviously I need way more particles than this. 
want to make this much, 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 much wider. And then you probably would just go and make your size bigger and you're going to get kind of a weird looking shape. And obviously it doesn't look like anything right now, but now you take your position and you put it like way off screen somewhere so that in fact you need to be even more off screen. So let's just put it back over here behind the text. Okay. So now what you do is, oh, thanks. Now it zooms in. Great. Okay, so um, the next thing you want to do is you obviously want this to move over. And there's a couple different ways you could do this. The way I like to do it is to use wind. Um, so you just go into your physics, into your air models, and you make your wind x negative so that it's going to be traveling in this direction. Um, you could also just keyframe the position of, or the offset if you wanted to, but I'm going to do it like this. So do this until it is, and see I don't like the way it looks right now because it's got kind of a weird looking edge there, so I'm just gonna make it even bigger, because I just want it to have an edge, I don't want it to be all opaque and have different regions, so let me just bring this back and look at it, and that's good enough. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull it so it covers my whole screen. Okay, so now it's gonna move, well, that's pretty fast, that's a lot of wind, so maybe I should take that down a notch, put that like here, so just check it. Okay, it's moving. I have no idea. The concept of how fast that's moving is pretty... I guess it's a little fast, too. you got to play around with it to see what you want for your particular effect. All right, good enough. Okay, so now you have your particle mat. Okay, so now the good news is we go back to our hand and we apply it. So we go to our project. And what did I even call it? Okay, particle mat 2 with lowercase letters. And I'm going to stick it up here on top because it's the mat. Obviously, I need to block stuff. I need to make this thing stop backing up because it annoys me when it does. And, um, okay, where was I? Oh, yes. So now we don't need to actually see this thing, so we can turn it off with a little eyeball. And over here you have track mat. And now if you don't have this little track mat area, you have to go in here to columns. That was just right-clicking, by the way. Columns, and then you pick it. You pick your, I think it's modes. Yeah, it must be modes. So um, that'll make this stuff visible in your whatever this window is called. Okay, so then for my track mat, um, I'm going to use the Luma Inverted. So you'll see that, and of course I have opacity turned on, so it looks weird, but the idea is that this is transitioning over here. And the reason, you know, if you do want to put opacity on, you can see, remember how I was talking about how, um, you know, this part of the mat here is solid and this part is opaque. So I go over here, it's inverting, now this part is opaque and this part is solid. And it's black. And it helps that I had a black sort of, I don't actually have a black background, but now it's black. So if you have something that doesn't have a black background, you don't want it to have a black background, you're kind of in trouble. Because by the very nature of this, it's going to just make it black. So, anyway. Now the thing is we want to put a texture so that when this hand is being covered by the mat, a texture is being revealed in the position of the hand. So I have this texture that's from Action Essentials Pack, so I'm just going to pop it into my comp. And it's kind of this weird cement, crackly cement, but if you are doing this, it looks like an old stone hand, because of course everybody wants to make a stone hand up here. That's very exciting. And um, now you're thinking, oh, well, this doesn't make any sense, because yeah, that's wonderful. I have my like texture that's, oh, someone's talking there. Hold on, outside. hold on. Anyway, you have this texture appearing, and it's sort of pointless, so what do I do? I want this to just appear on the hand, so okay, I'm going to use another mat. Okay, so but what am I going to use as a mat? Well, I'm not going to use my particle mat because that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to use the actual hand image as a mat because this in itself has um, luminance to it. So wherever this is light is going to be perceived as being um, something that we want to be visible and wherever it's dark is going to be something we want to be perceived as being opaque. And in that case, we don't want it to be inverted. We want it to be just that, like what I just described. So we're just going to do a Luma mat. But in order to do that, we need to actually make this mat. So I'm just going to duplicate this. Stick this guy down here. And we don't have to have the texture turned on, but we do need to have this guy. We need to take this off and say no tra track mat. Now, this this kept its value of Luma inverted because I duplicated it, but you want to take it off. You don't need that. And then this is the thing you want to apply the mat to, which is the texture. So this time again, you're going to do Luma mat. I'm going to turn this off. And wait, hold on. Did I turn off something? Oh yeah, you have turned this on actually. No, wait, turn that on. Ah, there we go. Turn that on so you actually want to see the texture because if you turn it off, you'll notice you're just seeing, again, opacity. So turn this texture back on and you'll see if we turn off opacity. Now it looks nice. So there you go. 
well, relatively speaking, it looks nice. Okay, so that is if you get a kick out of doing weird stuff like that, but what if that's just really not your thing? Well, then you can do, um, use this effect for text if you're like into titles and stuff. So let me just quickly show you how to do that. We're gonna use the same mat, but I'm just gonna create a new comp. I'm gonna call this text three. And I'm gonna create a solid for a background. I'm gonna make it black. So it doesn't love a black background. Call it background so I don't get confused. And then I'm going to zoom in so you can actually see what I'm doing. Well, not that much. There we go. What? It, oh, oh, there we go. Um, now I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, I need some text. So I'm going to put some text in here. Some new text. Stick it up there. Call it title. If I can spell. Good. I'm going to take my little pointer move it where I want it. It looks good there. Okay, now pay attention because this is going to be a little bit different. So we're going to still use the same particle mat. So I'm going to go back to my project. Oh, I'm already here. Get my particle mat. Stick it on my thing. Okay, so same thing here. Track mat is going to be Luma inverted. So now as you're scrubbing through, oh, that was a little bit too much. So you can see that it's like, whoa, it's replacing it with blackness. And if we go to our, oh, what do you know? Background's on. Hold on. If we went to our alpha channel without our background on, then you would see that it's basically saying, hey, make this opaque here. Well, when it's making it opaque, what can we do? We can make something else appear behind it. So this is the same concept with the hand. So what I want to have appear behind it is a color. So I'm going to create another salad and make it blue. And I'm going to put that under here. And then I'm going to use, again, the title as another mat. And this is the mat that's going to be used to conform my blue to the title area, which is a really official way of saying something that is kind of strange. But anyway. So I got my thing again. Again, this duplicates itself. We don't really want it to do that. So take out the no track or the yeah the track mat there. And now here, let me turn my background back on. This is where obviously turn that off for now. Um, actually, we do need to leave that on. This is where it gets confusing because you know how before we were doing Luma mats and I was talking about those like they were the greatest thing in the world. In this one, you kind of find that you have to do an alpha mat. And it's different because alpha mat is based on what's transparent, what's not transparent. If you look, obviously, what we were dealing with before was, hey, this was transparent, and we want there to be something there. So I'm basically telling it where something is transparent, add this in. The Luma was different because over here we had this hand, and it wasn't, I just, I wanted it to be, I wanted it to add color to the hand, not replace the hand with the texture. It looks it somehow it looks, looks better this way. I mean, you play around with it, whatever you find, but just know that there's an option there for you. But remember that when you're talking about using your particle mat specifically to apply to something, you want to, because this is basically a simple matter of being white, solid, and opacity, you want to use the Luma, because this is the part that's illuminated and this is the part that's not. So you play around with whatever works, but now you can see you have a weird little transition-y title thing and see if it actually plays. Yeah, so there you go. So those are the basics behind using particle fields for mats. And the fun part is you can do anything you want with this particle field. You can make it um, more jagged or make it more opaque. Um, one of the things I was doing before was make it so that it's not um, a big solid glob, but have it be little sandy bits. <laughs> and then those little sandy bits can kind of take over your image and make it look like it's dissolving. So there's a lot of different things you can do, but I just wanted to introduce the concept with some really weird and completely irrelevant examples, and that's that. Um, this is Lori Knapp, and this is my first tutorial, so please forgive me for all the strangeness that happened in it, but hopefully I'll be making more and much better ones soon.